Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and welcome to Quick Tip Thursday. Today's topic is what's new in Photo Effects Lab version 1.2. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to be talking about what is new in Photo Effects Lab version 1.2. There are several things, including the ability to save your project layers, the support of certain third-party plugins, a cropping grid overlay, along with a new deployment system called the Topaz Software Manager and more. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into the program. Let's just go ahead and take it up here. All right, the first thing that we're going to discuss here is the ability to save and open your layers. We actually created a new type of file format of .pfxl, so if you find yourself within Photo Effects Lab with several different layers and you want to save them for whatever reason, uh, whether it's because you like to work in a non-destructive way or maybe you need somebody's opinion on whether, you know, this cloud versus this cloud looks the best within the this program or this particular image, so you kind of get the idea here why projects might be important to you. Maybe you want to get that opinion or think about it later. So the way that you do that is very simple. You just go to File, Save As, and let's go ahead and name our file Cloud Options. Okay, and Currently, it's save as type image.tiff. Instead, just come over to your drop down and go to projects.pfxl, and you'll see that open up. Now, just save it in whatever um, area you would like to. I'm going to go ahead and save it in the right folder here and just say save. So it will take just a second to save here. All right, we're good to go. And if you then get out of your photo effects lab, and jump in back into it. You can come to File, Recent Files, or go to Open, but I'm just going to go to Recent Files, and here I see it, cloudoptions.pfxl. I can open it on up, and you can see all of your layers over here on the right, and they still have all of their names, and they also have all of the masks. If you worked with your brushes or mask brushes, all that information would be saved as well. So that is one of the things that are new and highly requested with by our users. So we're really excited about that one. Another, let me go ahead and open up a new image here while we move forward. Let's get into, here we go, let's open that on up. Okay, so another um, thing that was added into Photo Effects Lab version 1.2 is the ability to see your EXIF data. All you have to do is on this top area where you see the effects, plugins, Instatone history, there's now a little arrow. If you go to the right, you'll see that EXIF data shows up. You can click on that and you can see all of the EXIF data that we've included within this particular tab. Also, there were some issues with EXIF data being um, disappearing when going through Lightroom, and I believe it was a TIFF option and going through Lightroom, so that issue was resolved, and so all of the EXIF data and metadata is now good to go. It's another thing. Let's see here, a couple other kind of back-end things. Photo Effects Lab will now auto-install as a plug-in into Aperture, so Aperture users who were having to use it as their external editor, you no longer have to do that. It will auto-install as a plugin, and it already does that into Lightroom, so you don't even have to set that up any longer. Also, something that is really quite exciting is we can now support some third-party plugins. Let's go ahead and show you how to do that. I'm just going to make a duplicate of my layer over here on the right. And I'm going to show you how to add in third-party plugins. A couple very key points that I want to make sure you realize is that if you are in a 64-bit photo effects lab, you're going to need to add a 64-bit plugin. Um, we're having a lot of people saying, well, it's not showing up within my filter list whenever I add that plugin. That's because most likely you added a 32-bit into your 64-bit photo effects lab or vice versa. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, there are some that just aren't compatible at this time. We will continue to try to uh, work on this new feature. It's kind of a baby feature at this point, but the majority of plugins that are compatible with Photoshop, majority of them we've found that they're compatible with 
photo effects lab. Something to keep in mind, they have to be .8BF or .plugin uh, for Mac, .8BF for Windows type of plugins, so that's another thing. But the way that you add them through Photo Effects Lab is just go to your filter, add, remove plugins, click on that. A little pop-up box will show, and if you want to add, you just click on the Add button. It's a pretty simplified um, box at this time. And it's going to usually open into, if you have Photoshop, it's going to usually open into your Photoshop default area because that's where your, your plugins folder within your Photoshop. So I am in my Adobe Photoshop 64-bit plugins file. And that is where I had installed my Redfield plugins. So I just come down to my Redfield box, click on that, and select that folder. And you'll see the Redfield in this plugins list now. I'm good to go, so I'm just going to say quit, and now I go to filter, Redfield, and now I have my favorite Redfield plugins in here. So, for example, if I wanted to add some kind of crazy effects here with Fractalius, which I love, uh, let's see here, we can go with Cran Soft or something along that nature. I would probably play with this a little bit further within this plugin, but when you're done within the uh, plug-in that you're working in, you can just say OK, and you're going to see a little progress bar come up within uh, the Photo Effects Lab interface. It's going to process usually several times because each time it's going through this processing and going to 100%, it's basically every slider that was in um, the plug-in you were working in. So then we have our Fractalius added in to our workflow here over on the left, or over on, on the right. And really we wanted to give you this option to add in your um, other effects plugins because we really want this to be an effects workshop and really um, have give you the ability to work with not only the effects, not only the Topaz effects, but also uh, your other favorite effects. So that is a really exciting one. We have a couple other features. Let me delete this and duplicate again. One of them within the standalone mode, not within the plugin mode because the plugin mode does not have the crop tool, but within the standalone mode, if you come up to your crop tool, just click, we now have a 3x3 three three grid overlay. This was highly requested to help our users actually work with that rule of thirds and come up with a better color composition. So you can easily come in here and move crop where you need to. I'm just going to move this up just a little, maybe kind of get a little bit more of that rule of thirds going with my horizon right on that lower level and then you can say done and it's cropped. So that was before and after. So that was also really requested by everybody. But that, my friends, concludes what is new in version 1.2. There are also several fixes that we did behind the scenes, such as this has full Wacom compatibility. Some Intos uh, 3 and 4 tablet users had some uh, compatibility issues, so that is not going to occur within this program. Also, there was a little, a couple other things, such a slightly blurry preview um, window that's been resolved, other fixes along the way, but those are the major feature updates within 1.2. That does conclude Quick Tip Thursday. However, I am going to stay online with you and answer your questions that are coming through. Uh, Cheryl says, I missed how to open the grid overlay. Can you do that again? Sure. Cheryl, it's very simple. If you just go to the crop area right up here in the top menu, or the top icon menu, you'll see it next to the hand. And this is only available in the standalone application. The reason is, is that um, as a plugin, if you're going through Photoshop, for example, a plugin will not allow you to change the size of the image, or at least this particular plugin won't, when it processes back to Photoshop. So you can do all of your cropping needs within your host programs if you're using it as a plugin. However, if you're using it as standalone, we realize you might need to crop. So you can just click on the crop button, and there you have the overlay. It's automatic. Uh, Richard asked, when used as a plugin, can you keep the layers intact when going back to Photoshop? Richard, at this point, no. The layers are not going to go back into Photoshop. Um, this is on the request list, but um, currently that's just not a possibility. So 
And for those that have asked, this is not, um, you cannot save these layers as a PSD and then open them in Photoshop. The processing is just not there yet. However, that is why we came up with our own file format for those of you who do want to work within Photo Effects Lab in a non-destructive way. Now, one thing to note is, Richard, whenever you are, um, uh, whenever you are within a plug-in mode, so let's say I'm in Lightroom and I come into my photo effects lab and I have several layers like maybe that tree layer thing that I was showing you before and you want to think about that before you actually process it back into Lightroom which will flatten all the layers and bring it back in as a TIFF. You can save within Photo Effects Lab even when you're in even when you're using it as a plugin you can save a layered file but it's going to save not back to Lightroom obviously it's going to be saved wherever you save it and then you can open it as a standalone and continue working with the layered files. You're not going to be able to open those layered files if you're working through Lightroom because again the processing just doesn't make sense there it only brings in one file at a time, but or one layer at a time. But you are able to save those layers when you're in Lightroom and then open it up again as a standalone. Uh, Robert says, are there any plugins where it won't work? Um, yes, there are plugins that won't work. Most notably, NIC plugins are not compatible with a Photo Effects Lab, even though they are .8BF and .plugin type of formats. You can open your image and the layer into your NIC plugins from Photo Effects Lab, but the processing back to the layer is not the same as other plugins, so it are, we're not compatible at this time. We don't support that at this time. So if you try to actually add it into your list, it should not let you. Um, but other than those, other than that, we haven't found any other .8BF plugins that do not work or we haven't found many. The rest of the .8BF .plugin Photoshop compatible plugins are successfully added and, and processed in Photo Effects Lab. Sharon says, how do you send the photo back to Photoshop? Okay, that's going to be my last question here, but let's go ahead and shut this down. Say no. And let's go into Photoshop. Let's say Topaz Labs, Topaz Photo Effects Lab. It's going to open on up here for me. Let's go ahead. So now I'm using Photo Effects Lab as a plugin. You'll see that that crop has disappeared, and then I have these two buttons, Cancel and OK. If I want to duplicate, make a quick effect, I'm doing this cross-processed effect here, and maybe do some dynamics, whatnot, get whatever. We're done now, and I want to take it back to Photoshop. All I have to do is press OK. It's going to take it back and it's going to process back to the layer that I brought into Photoshop, and voila! That's how you're going to process it back to any of your host programs if you are using it as a plugin just by pressing OK. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining me for this Quick Tip Tuesday. I hope that you are excited about some of the new features within version 1.2. So have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.